So friends, uh, as part of uh, risk-based engineering framework, uh, we discussed uh, the probabilistic and deterministic uh, methods of uh, safety analysis or vice versa safety risk assessment. And uh, then we saw that there is a um, there is a integrated integration happens uh, using both these approaches. We uh, we saw also saw uh, what are the major or salient feature of risk based approach and probabilistic approach. And then finally we uh, we had this framework uh, wherein we said uh, that after integration the uh, we have to see how the criteria and goals are uh, met. And then finally, a prognostics and health management, uh, which is a part of risk-based approach, uh, the, that framework. And uh, finally, uh, if everything falls in place, then the risk-based approach, that application is complete. Otherwise, we have to revisit, um, go back to problem definition and all that. That was part one. Part two, uh, we started uh, discussing the major uh, procedural elements of risk-based approach. and then protection safety features you know so uh, after uh, having this discussion let us go to the next step in risk based uh, engineering um, which is uh, 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 similar to uh, both deterministic and probabilistic uh, but uh, there is a sort of integrated view is taken on the likelihood and consequences and then finally a list is formulated so this is called list of uh, potential initiating events that is number one. And then what kind of data will be required uh, for, for, for deterministic studies like thermal hydrolysis, structural uh, studies, uh, safety assessment studies, then um, uh, hazard um, an analysis, and uh, then finally uh, the probabilistic uh, uh, data that is required. So basically probabilistic data comes from uh, the, uh, the performance data uh, of the plant. But suppose if it is a new plant, then uh, there are uh, uh, generic databases uh, that are available where we can match the component specification and we can borrow those data for our analysis. So whenever a plant is at the uh, design stage, um, we'll find that the, uh, the assessment uh, uncertainty is more and as it uh, keeps uh, start operating, we, uh, we approach closer to uh, what is actually the performance of our plant in terms of uh, uh, risk and reliability both. So uh, once the data is available, then we have a deterministic safety assessment. Basically, uh, if I have to tell, uh, uh, these are basically thermal hydraulic studies, uh, whether the coolable, coolability criteria is met. Uh, this could be structural studies that uh, sufficient uh, factor of safety is there and the component will not fail. Uh, these are the studies which are done at, you can say, quality check. Uh, how it will be its uh, performance and then finally once the plant is uh, uh, developed then the integrated assessment happens and then the most important thing is the barriers uh, uh, are they, uh, there and they are sufficient and how is their performance so this basically happens in uh, deterministic analysis you can see um, defense in depth is the fundamental principle of uh, deterministic analysis so here uh, you can see the the in uh, nuclear the fuel itself is a barrier it doesn't allow the radiation to, it can, it can contain a good part of uh, uh, radioactivity uh, but if it goes out then the the fuel cladding is the boundary second boundary so these are this is called second barrier and then third barrier is uh, the coolant piping and the fourth barrier is the uh, containment so one you can imagine uh, for containing the radioactivity in the plant boundary there are there are one one two three four barriers the kind of safety which is going into building the plant you can see and then there are various level of protection uh, uh, that uh, that could be uh, that you know uh, normal operation uh, how to ensure normal operation um, then how to um, uh, save from mitigation, uh, bring, bringing back the plant to the normal. So these are various safety systems. Uh, they uh, they provide the various level of safety. And last is the uh, the, uh, the radioactivity should not go into the public. So we have this public uh, uh, exclu exclusion zone, um, which is uh, more than uh, one plus kilometer. 
So that means even if it is leaks out, so various level of production has been like so. This is a basically a very elegant uh, representation of um, I have taken it from IAEA in Sec 12 actually uh, this document. And uh, then we, so physical barrier and protection we have seen here. Then when you build the plant, uh, the deterministic philosoph uh, philosophy makes it safer by using the fail safe design. That means even if a component fail, you should go to the safe state. If safe state is, let's say, a switch, if the fail state is open, it will go into the fail state, uh, so, uh, like this. And the safety limits is the uh, fundamental condition which should not be violated to keep the plant safe. And uh, plant the documents, they will ensure this uh, safety, uh, safety limits and how it is implemented uh, in, the, uh, in the one document that is called technical specification. Um, so technical uh, specification has to be added when we are in operation. And this technical specification comes from the safety analysis. So when plant is designed, the important, uh, uh, important criteria, conditions, they are brought out as a safety limit. Then uh, uh, comes is in, uh, in plant when it operates, the limiting condition for operation and other uh, you know, surveillance frequency and all that. So uh, this is sec second building block for the deterministic safety. Then uh, design basis for, uh, for safety and process system. All the systems have their design basis. And this design basis percolates down from top safety uh, goals and criteria. Okay? And then built-in margin. Built-in margin means, uh, as we mentioned, uh, deterministic uh, methods, they have uh, conservative margin. So to ensure the uh, higher level of safety. Okay? And the level of redundancy and diversity. Uh, for uh, for a say one function, if it is a critical function, there will be um, not only redundancy in component in a system, but there will be redundancy of system itself. And there will be a diversity. Of, that means two system will be operating on diversified principle. So uh, like one system operates by falling of an object or uh, safety device by gravity, other will be some liquid that will be injected uh, by releasing some, uh, some, some components. So uh, these two are working on different principle, so safety is ensured. Then com compliance to single failure. No single component, of course it is a subset of redundancy and diversity, no single component failure should lead to uh, unsafe failure. And that's why uh, uh, we can see in probabilistic risk assessment, single component failure doesn't complete the accident sequence. Uh, there are more than two or more components uh, are required, even if it is a common cause failure, single, uh, single system failure because of common cause should not result into the accident scenario. So, and then the acceptance criteria. Basically, these are required while uh, accepting the analysis, whether it is complying the uh, results are complying with the set criteria and goals. And then the in-service inspection. Plant has to be monitored, it's structural integrity has to be monitored. So, in-service inspection parts uh, form parts of uh, plant uh, plant operational safety and of course uh, in similar way the maintenance guidance also and then definition of public domain has to be there and we know that, that uh, there is a exclusion zone and public uh, is uh, kept away from uh, nuclear plant boundaries uh, because they should not be exposed to uh, some even the lowest probability also they should not be exposed to um, hazardous radiation Next is uh, the human reliability. Now, um, as I had mentioned, the human reliability is the major contributing fact factor. This is a statement, uh, as I said, why uh, this 70%, but there are many factors which affect the human performance. So that analysis uh, in, uh, in, uh, in safety parlance, it is called uh, root cause analysis, has to be done um, like uh, in many uh, aviation events, you would have heard that uh, the pilot error. But why that pilot error occurred? So um, a robust method is re required uh, to analyze the uh, uh, pilot error. And they should be finally analyzed. So for that, what you require is a uh, robust human model. Okay. So, so these are the things which are required. And then uh, uh, in this risk-based engineering approach, a methodology called CQB, that is consciousness, cognition, and conscience, uh, and brain-based approach that has been developed. Like we develop model of a, uh, any hardware system, 
or electronic system or electrical system. Similarly, for a human also a model is required ki, uh, how the motor function works, how the consciousness works, how cognition works. So, uh, 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 there, is a, there are some insights uh, in terms of consciousness is the fundamental parameter uh, for human. Okay. So, the, 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 this particular thing is part of uh, human reliability research, is in, the project is in progress and uh, there are encourage, uh, there are very good fi findings on this actually. Um, yes, uh, consciousness is fundamental and uh, that's how uh, we come to the, uh, we define the essential requirement or feature of the human factor. Okay. Now, uh, probabilistic risk assessment, we have, uh, we have discussed a lot. So, um, so, let us also see how the probabilistic modeling, um, the event tree, if uh, um, it doesn't require a very uh, detailed knowledge of probability or this thing, but uh, if we are studying risk-based engineering, then we should know there are two major tools uh, which are called fault tree and event tree. What you are seeing in front of you is the uh, event tree. Event tree means how in a plant, if the accident happens, uh, how events event will progress. Like let's take the case of um, uh, loss of coolant accident. Loss of coolant accident, if it is, you, you can see its frequency is 1 into 10 to the power minus 4, very low. That means generally it is expected that this type of accident should not happen in the lifetime of the plant. But as the deterministic way, if it happens, then we should have this protection mechanism. So uh, we have the safety system which will shut down the reactor. On top, it is success. When the uh, path goes down, it is failure. So if the uh, protect, protection system or shutdown system gets activated, then you travel the success path. If the emergency powers uh, 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 gets activated, then again second success. And third is when uh, for in, in response to LOCA, if emergency cooling system has activated and started, so this is third success. So that means the no core damage, NCD means no core damage and 6 to 10 to the power minus 4 is the uh, frequency but uh, here frequency doesn't have meaning because there is no core damage has taken place but just of, uh, for the heck of completing the mathematics it has been shown here. Now suppose if the reactor shutdown system itself doesn't activate, it might have its own redundancy, diversity and all but by chance if, if it doesn't happen, uh, you can see the frequency uh, uh, probability the phi into 10 to the power minus phi uh, demand, uh, per demand is the probability. Here you can see loca is a frequency per year. There is a difference between units we have for initiating event that is per year and uh, for uh, safety system performance, they have to get activated on demand. So that's why this uh, assessment has been phi into 10 to the power minus phi per demand. So 99.999% uh, it will come. But suppose if it fails, then it results into core damage. And that core damage uh, frequency contribution from this particular accident sequence is phi into 10 to the power minus 9. You can imagine how low it is. Okay? So that means it says it is a negligible uh, outcome. Now, if the reactor shutdown system has occurred, uh, has, has successfully operated, the, the emergency power itself is not available for some reason. The on-site diesel generators, um, the other emergency power supply modes are not available. Though it, it, it may not be possible, but it has been estimated and it was found that for emergency power failure, uh, the probability is 10 to the power minus 4. Okay, three into, so that means whatever on-site diesel generator uh, sets are there, um, they are not operating and they have failed and they are not meeting the uh, success criteria. So again, core damage will occur. Why? Not because of this failure. Because our emergency cooling pumps, they are having dependency on this power. So uh, you can say it is, go, it, it is uh, um, this thing, system will not come, these two system, uh, this, this system will not come. So it will result into core damage. Actually, emergency power was, has come successfully, but the system which was to cool, that itself has failed. You see, 
then uh, core damage it results in the this uh, consequences are have been uh, written like no core damage core damage that uh, core uh, here also core damage and here also core damage so these three terms they are giving us the core damage conditions very simple and very elegant uh, way to um, assess safety and uh, represent the safety uh, in a documented manner so the core damage for the suppose if plant has got these are the only condition loga loga condition then core damage frequency for the plant or for loca event will be i is equal to 1 to n so we have 2 3 4 goes to core damage so summation of this three will give us the core damage you can see here uh, they will be uh, 10 to power 6 below 10 to power 6 at that range and this is a figure which we get almost for all the nuclear plants world over are less than that so the code but then here uh, there is a one uh, question how this probabilities have been arrived they are very critical in assessing this this frequency because loss of coolant frequency this also is estimated based on the data there is uh, based on the generic uh, data that are available based on the data that we have here so we have arrived here but how these are the complex system safety system how its failure probability is estimated so uh, here is an example of emergency cooling system in the next slide um, how this thing has been estimated um, probably uh, so eccs failure emergency core cooling system failure that is what we are talking about its a probability has been shown there 6 minus 4 so uh, there are two possibilities here either in injection of uh, coolant fails or common cause failure happens that will lead to total failure of the system that is uh, 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 injecting the uh, coolant into the system so that core can be safe now injection can happen train 1 and train 2 i showed you there were two trains so if train 1 fails and if train 2 fails then only injection failure will occur you can see here so independently train 1 train 2 fails then otherwise even if one train is working it will not be called as injection end so how we can read train 1 and train 2 sorry it is written to one train 2 uh, failure now uh, how train 1 failure can be defined so either pump fails ruptured disc fail or control mechanism fail um uh, and then wall you can see there was redundancy in walls so wall failure and train one will fail similarly because both are similar system this to and then this will lead to injection failure common cause failure means common cause failure pump pumps suppose if both the pumps fail here what we have taken is independent failure here we have taken both the pumps have failed and walls have failed why how the wall wall can fail the walls a uh, simplistic term if i have to define the control power supply for the wall though in design the they come from different sources but if they, they fail okay or due to some aging phenomena these two wall uh, wall fail or because of some maintenance issues these two wall same maintenance was done on these two both the walls are uh, both the pumps uh, this fails so common cause may, uh, failure uh, can disable the redundancy built in redundancy into the system is very uh, very important to <coughs> note this thing and it is taken care in safety analysis also so common cause failure is very important um, and you know it has to be modeled in detail actually so um, with this fault tree uh, we have sort of defined uh, our uh, a broad feature of probabilistic uh, safety assessment or risk assessment Uh, we have defined so once probabilistic safety assessment has been done then uh, the typical results of pra um, it comes with the statement of core damage frequency so you can see here fre frequency of event this is done by a method called monte carlo simulation um, we will discuss if time permits uh, okay and then what you get basically you don't get the point value normally you would have seen in deterministic we get the point value uh, so much of pressure so much of temperature 
um, you know, and uh, structural strength. But in probabilistic method, um, because it is based on, based on the data, and data will have some uh, variation or spectrum, uh, so um, there is a very uh, high level uh, distributions which are, are used to understand what is the spread in the data. So uh, it will have mean, it will have a lower bound, and it will have upper bound. So you can see the results of core damage frequency, CDF, I have written. It is presented as a mean value, a median value. Uh, so I am giving here median value, uh, which is nothing but a representation of mean, uh, and it is going up the order, order of uh, 2 into 10 to minus 5 or less. And uh, this is further less, 5% and 10% upper bound gives around 10 to the power 4 or so. So that means it, it becomes more realistic. If I give a mid, um, mean value or median value and I give upper bound and lower bound. So designers can take care of you know this upper bound figure and they can design the things. So that means the complete risk uh, spectrum is covered. Or there can be a uh, uh, there, there can be a decision also to take the mean value, but these are uh, discussions. Uh, these are left to discussion and debate uh, with the analyst. Now, apart from sensitive uh, uncertainty analysis, we saw uh, uncertainty has a range actually. You know, so it can be from this to this. So suppose if I have a component, let us say uh, for this component pump, the pump failure probability is, let us say, 10 to the power minus 3. But then, as we know, it the, even the input comes with the uncertainty. So, um, so um, given this uncertainty, I should be able to do a sensitivity analysis. One case could be impact of assumptions. I uh, mentioned in the beginning that assumptions are very important when we conclude the studies, and for that, sensitivity analysis are required. Let us say there was one component for which failure probability was not available, only point estimate was available, 1 into 10 to minus 3. If I take that thing, there will be one result uh, of system failure or, or a plant failure. But then uh, if I vary that thing and see in terms of how it is varying, uh, I, I, uh, so I will know that it is not uh, either the component is, uh, if it is very important, it will have direct sensitivity to the final results or if it is not important, there will not be an impact. That is one way of looking at it. Then, if we are doing any change in the plant, or if we are optimizing, let us say uh, uh, there is an operating plant, and the crew feels, or the management feels, that we are doing more testing. And the testing frequency should be reduced, because testing is um, leading to aging of the components. Uh, it consumes resources also. And it provides an opportunity for error uh, while doing the testing itself. This might sound uh, really uh, vague, but it, it, it might, can happen. So, um, so why not we uh, reduce the frequency? That means earlier, if suppose we are doing it every month, let us do it in two months or three months. So, if using these models, PRA models, uh, we can do a study only at your system level or even go damage level. So, here it has been done at system level. And you can see what is the minimum uh, unavailability we get here. It's coming almost like 10 to minus 4. And uh, this uh, uh, frequency, so I can choose between this band and some value. Uh, the acceptable value is 1, 1 into 10 to minus 3. So I can choose this uh, interval or here also. So you see, you didn't you find a very, um, very uh, elegant mechanism uh, earlier, the uh, frequency of the component, uh, the testing and maintenance was de determined by uh, expert judgment or you know operating experience. But here, here you have a mathematical model wherein you can define the testing frequency. So this is one sensitivity analysis produces very good results uh, in terms of uh, operating scenarios also. Now uh, we have seen the uncertainty and sensitivity analysis. Now. There are domain specific assessment. Like suppose, if my study required a lot of structural analysis, so uh, what do I do? Uh, what is the uh, what is the how I'll interpret the stress, strength, and uh, obviously, uh, like any other parameter, stress strength itself will be having a variation among themselves 
at, uh, at different location, spatial or in time domain. In time domain means if the component is uh, slowly corroding over a period of time, definitely strength will come down, stresses will increase. So these kind of studies uh, and they, they will vary from domain to domain. In chemical, corrosion will be required. Uh, or some other type of phenomena investigation. In nuclear, there will be some other phenomena. What we are talking so, so far is just the nu nuclear thing actually. So domain specific uh, uh, thing, if you have to, let's say in design, suppose if we are designing something, so the traditional deterministic method, you have a factor of safety, mean stress upon mean, uh, sorry, it is mean strength upon mean stress. So a factor of safety of 1.123 uh, is, uh, and. Uh, it, it is acceptable if it is 2 or so. So we'll say, okay, it is a factor of safety of 2 we have used. But then we did not know, even while doing this, because we used the point value. So we did not know the uncertainty associated with those variations. Okay. So, but this was a traditional way uh, of doing analysis. But if you go into the probabilistic domain, then you have distribution of stress and distribution of strength. And now, uh, normally, when you design the system, the stress and strength distribution will be kept apart. But if there, there is a overlap, so either with time or due to uh, operating condition, then both will interface here and there will be overlapping reason, which is nothing but failure probability reason. So even here, even after a factor of 50 of 1 and 2 and all, we were not able to give failure probability, but here we are able to give a failure probability. Uh, because there is a way uh, to analyze this situation. Uh, further, there are formula, methods, complex uh, analysis and all. But uh, this represent itself tells the utility of probabilistic method in design, actually. So, and then design uh, follows. Uh, you, uh, there are different distribution, uh, different methods, uh, then simulations, and finally a design can claim that it has taken to the best possible the uncertainty in uh, stress and strength. So now, now if we have dealt with this one, then uh, um, it could be chemical corrosion also uh, or anything. And here, next step in risk-based engineering is the integrated risk assessment. Uh, this process cannot be uh, explained because it is more of detailed analysis uh, and uh, you know, uh, matching up accept, acceptance criteria, uh, how far we are from the acceptance criteria. Uh, it could be iterative, it could be analysis, it could be, the, uh, you know, trying to investigate the new method, uh, new models uh, going away from mathematics. So uh, it is a recursive process. But then at the end of the day, you have used probabilistic method, in, uh, deterministic method, in a, on an integrated platform and you provide the result with the best uh, conditions that are uh, that can be uh, wherein uh, one thing we can say that uh, risk has been brought to the minimum level while the reliability that is planned throughput also has been ensured so and and uh, as the uh, as the time passes this can be revisited and you know uh, uh, it is called reassessment periodic reassessment all uh, so this can be done now, once this has been done, uh, the next step is quality attribute. Um, but before that, I'll give an uh, I'll give an overview of what we have discussed. We started with the plant data; uh, it's important sources. What are the plant records? Deterministic safety assessment. Just a salient features we saw: probabilistic uh, assessment role of human factors uh, in uh, risk assessment and how one should be very careful uh, giving due importance to human uh, human uh, actions, behavior, procedures, because still uh, it is one of the uh, one of the area, common cause failure in human, uh, they are, they are uh, really posing challenges to the plant safety. Uh, even though we have a lot of redundancy, diversity, and uh, like uh, even human error, we are trying to reduce. Uh, we'll see in prognostics and health management by AI methods. We are uh, trying to uh, see that before failure, we get a warning or we know the deviation, and then uncertainty. They are very important parameters. 
and uh, then domain specific i give just one example there could be many example and then integrated risk assessment so thank you very much <laughs>